Hello, and welcome to today's session, Improving Your Financial Wellbeing. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Crystal Bovin, and I am a health and wellbeing consultant here with Borislow Insurance. Um, however, prior to joining the team, I have about a 15-year career in the financial industry. With that being said, I am not a financial advisor or anything like that. I just have been exposed in the financial world across most of my career up until this date. So for this session, I am bringing my very humanized experience and my approach to finances. Um, and that's hopefully going to resonate with you. I think we are all human first and foremost, but as a disclaimer, I am not giving any uh, financial, legal, tax advice whatsoever today. If you have those questions, a lot of times we have EAPs or employee assistance programs or uh, retirement advisors um, or anyone at your local institutions, they can all help you if you have specific questions. So if you're not sure what you have available in your benefit package, specifically reach out to your HR, or if you are HR and you're not sure, reach out to Boris though. We're happy to help and that's why we're here. With that being said, here at Borsa, we offer um, just a little bit about us. So we offer employee benefits as you may or may not be aware, but we also have a ton of teams on the back end that help with lots of other services. So whether that's human resource co consulting, whether that's individual insurance or investments. So if you have someone who uh, may be starting their own business or switching jobs and they don't have insurance, and they need to get it in individually rather than through a company. We do that. We offer employer retirement consulting. So if you need um, to look at an, uh, a retirement option, we have that. We have Medicare and Medicaid solutions. So definitely check us out. Uh, employee health and well-being is where I hang out. And I'm really excited that you're all here today. I love financial well-being and could probably talk about it all day. I promise I will keep mindful of the time, but um, if there's anything that you need or you have um, any additional uh, employee needs, please reach out to us. We are happy to help. Specifically in health and well-being, we focus on the entire employee. So we like a holistic approach that includes your physical well-being, financial, mental, and social well-being. We offer customized design programs, we do measurable, actionable results, communication plans, and we really focus on strategy. So again, if there's anything that you may need when it comes to health and well-being, they complement benefits so nicely, please reach out to me. I'm happy to help. You can email us at wellness at borislow.com. For today's session, so just a little quick uh, agenda so you kind of know the flow of today. We are going to do a perception practice on um, the purpose of increasing our personal awareness, why it's so important, and the relationship between financial stress and physical well being, and active practices on how to improve your financial well being, whether that's um, financial stress, budgeting, debt, and savings. Um, again, I am coming from the, the humanized space, so I hope that you enjoy my approach. Today, I would love for you to actively participate and engage in polls. So um, the first one is, what is your first money memory? You're welcome to participate in the poll. You're welcome to participate in the chat. So this was um, something that was kind of fun. When I think back, um, uh, a long time ago, I can remember we used to walk right five miles uphill both ways to the little store that was, you know, fairly close. And I would buy Swedish fish because you could buy one fish for one penny. So I would go gather as many pennies as I could possibly find to buy Swedish fish. And now that I think about it, it's kind of gross because they were in a jar, but um, I'm sure you have a first money memory as well. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll here and share it with you. So I love that most of us, uh, our first memory is saving money, spending money. You're welcome to share in the chat. Um, uh, I remember, you know, having a lemonade stand that we used to share uh, and make money. 
absolutely buying lifesavers at Kmart. Oh, I remember Kmart. Who misses Kmart? That's funny. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, and we just wanted to, I, the purpose of this is right to bring light of um, the topic of financial well-being. So if you're doing this with your employees too, um, this is just something that's more fun and engaging and uh, feel free to take it if you'd like. Next, I really wanted to kind of hang out and I love an active practice. So I encourage you to maybe, you know, if you have a notebook close by or if you want to use like your notes on your phone or whatever your heart desires, maybe it's a Word doc or something. But how would you define wealth? So we sometimes as society get really wrapped up in money. Uh, or this is my personal opinion, and everything is driven by money. I understand, we, you know, we need money to survive and, and you know, do all of the things, um, but just having, uh, you know, lived in this space for a while, I just thought it would be a really fun practice, and you're welcome to share in the chat if you're comfortable. Again, no pressure. There is no judgment. Um, no expectation whatsoever, but how would you define wealth? So um, would that be time? Would that be relationships, money, energy, health? Um, and if you're not sure maybe what you define as wealth, maybe take a look at how you spend your time. Um, maybe look at your calendar and how you fill your calendar. Maybe things that bring you joy. You could take a look at your camera roll. I swear my dog is a lot of my camera roll. Um, and maybe how you spend your money. Take a look at your bank statements. Um, go on your, if you have a mobile app, you know, check out your, your recent activity and see, you know, what you spend your money on. And we'll get into it. But I just thought it would be really nice to kind of pause here and really see what you value and as well. And, you know, from a big picture, kind of space. Um, and I don't know about you, but it changes sometimes on the daily. So today I don't feel super great. So to me, to have my health and my energy would be absolutely <laughs> amazing. So, um, you know, just to keep this in mind as we continue to move through. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to launch the next poll. What would you say is your top financial stressor? Again, no judgment. This is just to increase your personal awareness and kind of take a moment because, again, I don't want to just talk to you. I want you to actively um, utilize all of this information. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the poll here and share the results. So what would you say is your top financial stressor? Uh, most of us say savings budgeting and and then um, actually 0% on debt. So that's huge. I have to agree, I am in the savings and the budgeting with you um, and they're all very, very normal. I just like to um, start with, we are all poor. I don't care if you make $5 an hour or $500 an hour. <laughs> the more you make, the more you spend. And I feel like we are all poor together uh, and that's, it's okay. We're all in it together. So um, please don't put any high, high expectations on yourself. We are all doing the very best we can with what we have. With that being said, it can, it often is the number one stressor. So financial well-being, your finances, your money, um, how, how that affects us has a big part. And so when we start to worry about our wallet's health, we tend to put our own health on the back burner. And so you can see, right, when we start to worry or stress about our finances, it can create things like anxiety, depression, it could create moodiness, it can uh, create helplessness, uh, all of these different things throughout our day to day. And they could be, you know, maybe we're distracted while we're at work a little bit, um, but maybe it comes up on the regular. And oftentimes when we are stressed, we tend to lean towards specific behaviors. Um, and again, no judgment. We are all human. I think everyone has one. Um, it could be, we could be smoking, we could be drinking, we could be overeating, 
sometimes we could be shopping or spending. We could be oversleeping or undersleeping. Um, lots of other things too, right? Maybe we're on our phone too much. So it leads to all of these other behaviors, right? It's almost like a numbing effect sometimes. And those can lead to physical, uh, our physical well-being. And so that could create high blood pressure, affects our heart health. We could have insomnia uh, or stomach disorders. We can actually even have frequent colds. So as you can see, stress is not good for the physical body or for the mental health either. Um, I talk about it mostly in the physical here because it kind of leads towards um, more of those chronic uh, diseases. Heart health is the number one um, silent killer. So just to keep that in mind, not to be a Debbie Downer, but just to be really honest. And so stress is really, really harmful. And financial stress is even harsher um, because it's linked so much to our survival. Um, so I just wanted to bring this up, kind of show you how it can affect us. And maybe just take a moment to reflect on your own personal, um, you know, when you're stressed out, what's your natural reaction? You know, uh, what kind of behavior do you lean into? And then, you know, do you have any other physical symptoms that might come up? Maybe it is a headache or uh, maybe it's some pain or back pain. Maybe you have some uh, tightness in your shoulders. So certain things like that. So I just wanted to, to bring awareness to this, but also not focus too much on here. I want you to make sure you use your preventive care. Um, and I'm going to show you some, uh, I guess I would maybe call them preventive care measures in the financial well-being space. So I hope you enjoy them. Um, but as we get started and in diving into that preventive care, I'm going to go ahead and share another poll. What would you say is your top financial goal? Would it be budgeting? Would it be saving? Would it be debt? Absolutely. And I have no surprise. Typically, our number one stressor is also our financial goal. So as you can see, it really relates quite nicely here. And I'm human. I absolutely 100% um, uh, have the same. So let's dive in. You ready? All right. So I have listed here different things that have worked for me. I will say I am human first. I've been really poor before. I have struggled just like every other human with debt, with savings, with budgets, um, and all of that. And so I pulled out the things that really work best for me. Um, sometimes they're talked about, sometimes they're not. And I hope that you find them really helpful or maybe something will stand out. So let's talk about budgeting first and foremost. So it sounds scary. First thing I think about when budgeting is this huge Excel sheet and I have to do all this math on all the details of everything that costs me money. Um, but I'm actually going to skip that part. If you want that, I promise you it's all over Google. I have lots of resources, all the things, but these are the, the ones that work kind of best for me. So step one, financial goal. So we really just did that. You know what direction you want to go. It's kind of like a GPS. We can't move forward if we don't put in our destination and where we want to go. Um, and obviously the more specific, the better. I always think, you know, just like with any well-being practice, whether it's mental, physical, uh, financial, whichever, you make it really small so that it's attainable and then go from there. So one step at a time. It's more about consistency than it is, you know, really high expectations. Next, I really like categorizing your spending. So where do you swipe your card all the time? <laughs> That's the easiest way to categorize it. Um, you could also take your bank statements, say the last month to maybe three months, maybe, I would say. Um, and you could, I remember when I was really, really dirt poor, I would highlight, I went through my statements and I highlighted um, different categories. So for example, right? Maybe like rent was one or like a car payment was one. But then, you know, how many times was I going to the grocery store? 
How many times was I getting gas? How much was I spending, um, you know, on different things? So, you know, maybe you go and get coffee every morning. Um, maybe you shop on Amazon a lot. Um, you know, maybe you're stopping at the gas station. I don't know about you, but my partner, he <laughs> he's on the road for his job. So he goes to the gas station a lot. Um, I don't know why, but little Debbie's snacks are apparently <laughs> much more enticing than the snacks in the cabinet. So, um, you know, and just to keep light of it, it's not to judge you. It's just to really uh, kind of do that quick, hmm, where am I spending all my money? And then if you were to add them up, you could really see a really nice big picture of, oh, I'm spending, you know, $200 a week on, on I don't know, I'm making this up on Amazon. So again, that was really helpful for me. Um, and from there, I then worked on reducing unnecessary bills. So I don't know about you, but there's always these subscriptions and they automatically renew or they automatically sign you up for, um, and, you know, and now I feel like the TV itself, everyone wants you to subscribe to their, you know, the Netflix and the Hulus and the Disney Plus and uh, you know, the peacock and the pair. I don't even know how many we have. So do we watch them all? Who knows? Uh, you know, maybe it's that Dunkin' Donuts. Maybe if you find you're spending 50 to 100 bucks a week on Dunkin' Donuts, uh, and that's something you want to make at home to save the 100 bucks while you reach your goal of savings, go for it. Give it a shot. Try it. Maybe it's Amazon. Maybe you, uh, try to delete the app or something like that. So again, just bringing awareness, one, through categorizing where you're spending and two, kind of reducing, you know, anything that is unnecessary. Um, next, I would be a big, big fan of direct deposit. You can do your budget. I do all my budgeting through direct deposit. I would be lying if I told you different. I have, which actually matches nicely, I have multiple accounts in multiple banks. And so it really helps that when you don't see it, you just put it where it needs to go. Uh, it really helps your brain so that, you know, that one account where you do swipe your card, you can see what's available. And then you quickly, as soon as you're paid through your company, hopefully you have direct deposit, um, you can set aside, you know, account for maybe your, your home and your, like your, you know, monthly bills, like your electric and things like that. Maybe you're working on savings. I, uh, we're, we'll get into that, but having multiple accounts for different purposes and multiple banks is also another really nice option that sometimes we don't lean into because oftentimes I feel like when I first started, I had one checking account and one savings account and that was it. Um, and I tried to do everything out of those. And you can absolutely 100%, but these are just tools that worked well for me. Um, next, I also will say, um, I was very poor and I'm not ashamed to say it. I think we all have life experience. And so I wanted more money. So I had to make more money. I don't know about you, but um, not that I want to work more, but if I had to, I know that everybody right now is hiring. They all have their signs out. Um, and so I personally, if I had, had to work multiple jobs, I would go for one that was less mental um, and more of an easy money, um, maybe like a grocery store or something like that. And so I would go and I would, I worked multiple jobs and worked towards my goal. So again, if you need more money, you can always try to make more money. Um, maybe if you have the opportunity for raises at your job, um, that's also an option too. But there are lots and lots of places always hiring to so always have the opportunity if that is of importance. And you don't have to work multiple jobs forever. It's usually only a short period of time. I also want to point out with budgeting, to absolutely budget for flexibility and for fun. If you love your morning Dunkin' Donuts, if you love, you know, shopping once a week or something like that on Amazon, budget for it. That's okay. If you love going out to lunch every day, that's totally fine. Um, being happy is just as important. And so make sure you budget for those things. 
Um, and I have a financial planner and I budgeted things for, you know, going to get my hair done throughout the year or, you know, shopping. I like to, you know, shop seasonally or something. And that's normal. Um, and so just make sure you just budget for it. So don't be ashamed or don't feel like you can't have any fun at all. Um, just put it in the budget. That's all. And maybe you open a different account and you put, you know, five bucks a week or something for that. Um, it still counts. So you just know what you have to work with. So um, I hope you really like these. And I also wanted to point out the importance of budgeting. So I don't know about you, but sometimes we go over budget. Pretty common, right? It's easy to swipe a card and maybe not check your account, not know how much is in there. Um, so when you um, go over budget, I want to bring to mind, what are you deprioritizing, right? So maybe you um, take it from somewhere else. So maybe you take it from your vacation fund, or maybe you take it from your savings, or maybe you take it from your food bill, um, or something like that. So just keep in mind, you know, when we budget, it's important to build flexibility. Um, and when we go over budget, you know, how often are we doing that? And when we do do that, what are we deprioritizing? Are those our needs? Are those our wants? Are those our savings? So just keep that in mind. That one was really eye-opening that I learned about recently. All right. So let's move into debt. So I'm going to go over a, a little bit faster. This one just based on the audience today and debt isn't a huge one for us, but I did want to give it a space because it is something that is talked about often. And, you know, if you have a loved one or um, an employee or someone that you are close with who might be struggling, hopefully maybe something um, would be helpful here. Share our YouTube channel, you know, share it with them. Happy to help them. So with debt, um, what was really helpful is just checking out which debt had the highest interest rate. Um, the reason being is that debt costs us a lot. So it costs us the most. So if it's an interest rate of 5%, we're only paying 5% more than what our, maybe our loan is or our credit card. Maybe if our interest rate is 25%, then we're paying 25% more. So whatever the highest interest rate is, and interest rate is much more important to take a look at than the APY. I won't go into full details, but just know interest rate is the most important. Um, and so uh, from there, once I knew which one was costing me the most, that one really helped to determine which one I wanted to pay off first. Um, from there, I also rounded up on all payments. You know, say your payment is, you know, 400 $89.72 or something like that. Maybe you can round up to $490. Maybe you can round up to $500. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with. And I also find that rounding up was really helpful for me to kind of keep my mental budget kind of going um, rather than having to remember specifics, but that's just me. Um, and so my sister actually is in the financial world as well. And she is more to the penny. <laughs> um, and I think I drive her crazy, but um, whatever works best for you. But if you can round up and pay a little bit extra, um, that will help save towards what you're paying towards that interest anyway. So just to keep that in mind, it's helping your, you're basically paying yourself first. So uh, focus on one at a time. So green and say we have five, 10 bills that we have to pay. Absolutely. Uh, maybe, you know, for example, we can only round up to the next dollar. Totally fine. Um, and if we have a little extra, say we have five bucks extra, 20 bucks extra, 100, whatever you're comfortable with, maybe we put that extra on the one with the highest interest rate. And we kind of create this, uh, this snowball effect and it will come, it will start to come off quite quickly. You'll be surprised at how fast it does, does work. So focus on one at a time rather than trying to pay more, you know, extra on all of them. Um, obviously don't take on more debt. If we can help it, 
try not to take on any more. Um, and that is also really helpful because if you have the goal of paying down debt and then you get more debt, you're kind of working against yourself. So if it's an option, that's definitely recommended. Leave your credit cards at home. So if you have a tendency to maybe swipe them because they're right there or you have it or you're like, oh, I'll just spend a little bit of extra because I can just put it on the credit card. Try not to take it with you. So leave them at home. If you are struggling with debt or someone you know, you can always say, say you have a credit card and you start paying it down. Uh, you might want to call or you foresee this may be a problem, you know, in the future or until you can kind of get your, your head around it. Um, you can always call your credit card company and actually lower your limits. So I don't know about you, but they love to increase the limits, um, which, you know, that's their business. And so um, it's actually an option. You can call your credit card company and ask them to lower it to something that is more manageable for you. So for example, maybe your credit card limit is, I don't know, 5,000, 10,000, 20, 30,000. Can you pay 30,000 in a month um, to not get any interest rate? I don't know about you, but I can't. That is too much for me. So I called and I had lowered all of my credit card limits to be more manageable. Um, and so something that was comfortable, it could be $100, could be $500, could be $1,000 or a couple thousand, um, you know, for an emergency or something. But that's always an option. And um, once you lower it, they don't automatically increase it, which is also nice too. Uh, pay your bills first when you get paid. So again, as soon as you get paid, pay your bills. That helps with debt. That's also an obvious one, but sometimes we might, you know, buy food or um, other things like that. And, and absolutely, you know, make sure you're taking care of yourself, but um, try to put the bills first. We talked about earning more money if you need it. If you're struggling with it, that's always an option. And if you're really struggling and it's not something that's talked about a lot, um, call your bank. They have options. Um, if you're really struggling and to make payments, um, that could affect your credit. And I won't go into that too much, but um, call your bank. They have options more than likely to work with you and, um, you know, talk to the collections officer or, or things like that. And, and, you know, try to set yourself up for success. You know, maybe you lost a job out of, you know, out of nowhere or, you know, have un an unanticipated expense that you weren't expecting. You know, I, I don't know about you, but I'm close to Vermont and Vermont had a ton of flooding recently and that was not probably budgeted for. So ask those that you have a relationship with, your bank, your credit card, um, for options if you are struggling. So. Hopefully you found some of these helpful. Um, and if not, hopefully um, somebody who would, who's focusing more on debt, definitely share it with them as well. And I realize that I'm talking for way too long, so I apologize. I will go through these really fast. Um, we are already at time. If you have to leave, I respect that 100%. Um, but with savings, this is where I am at personally in my life. I know a lot of us are as well. So pay yourself first. Direct deposit is very helpful. Um, use a separate account that you don't have access to. No online banking, so you can't transfer money from savings to checking. Uh, no debit card, so you can't get it at you know, an ATM or at the store automatically put any extra earnings into savings. If you get a bonus, if you have tax uh, returns, uh, if you get a raise, uh, hopefully, you know, add that to your savings, which you didn't know you missed. You won't, you won't miss it if you put it somewhere else. Um, maybe if you get a, a couple percent raise, put a percent into your retirement. That's a savings option too. Did you pay off a loan recently? Put that payment into your savings. Um, if you get a company match with retirement, contribute at least the minimum so that you can take advantage of that. Um, these are things that are really helpful for me. I tend to deprioritize my personal savings when I go over budget because life happens and I am normal and I'm human just like all of you. Uh, and so I definitely lean into the direct deposit and I have an account at a bank that I never go to. That I don't have access to very quickly, I would have to physically go there to pull the money out. 
and that is helping me. So hopefully some of these are helpful. If you're very, very stressed about um, financials, then um, take a peek at the stress cycle. It's important to uh, get it out of you. So physical movement, breath work, um, social connection and laughter, or you know, embracing an affection. Sometimes it just helps to cry it out or do something really creative. Um, and if you are still with me, I thank you for your patience. I'm going to go ahead and launch the last poll. Um, these are just a few that we went over today. And I am sorry that I rushed through savings because we are all focusing on it. Um, definitely, uh, you know, which financial practice would you incorporate today? Financial goal, unnecessary bills, categorizing spending, um, so many different options. It doesn't let me put them all on there, but um. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're struggling with savings um, or budgeting or anything like that, please reach out to me. I would love to talk to you. Um, if you have financial coaching available through work, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll, share results, reduce unnecessary bills. Yeah, Netflix, you might have to go. <laughs> uh, open an account with another bank. That has definitely been one of the biggest for me. So I hope you enjoyed today. Thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure spending time with you. I hope you have a lovely day and check out our YouTube. Have a great day, everyone. Nice to see you. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Erin. Thank you so much.